Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to a tutorial on variational principle of quantum mechanics. So the variational principle basically states that the expectation value of the Hamiltonian of the system, so here let's say H is the Hamiltonian of the system. So the expectation value with respect to some trial wave function phi, so here phi is the trial wave function and we are going to guess it, alright. So, the variation principle basically states that the expectation value of the Hamiltonian of the system with respect to some trial wave function phi is always greater or equal to the ground state energy of the system. So basically the variation principle gives us an upper bound on the ground state energy of the system and as, as I said before trial wave function phi is going to be guessed by us. So if we are you know very good at guessing and we guess a trial wave function phi which is exactly the ground state wave function then we would get rid of the inequality sign and we will just use the equality sign and we will get the ground state energy. However if your trial wave function is pretty much close to the um, actual wave function then you are going to get an upper bound on the ground state energy which is going to be pretty approximate and pretty good as long as the trial wave function is close to the actual value of the wave function or the actual wave function. So now we will go to a quick proof of this variational method or the variational principle. So since the trial wave function phi um, should be um, pretty much uh, similar to the actual wave function so what we can do is we can write it as a linear combination of the actual wave functions of the Hamiltonian of the system. So let's say that the psi n are the actual eigenfunctions or the uh, wave functions of the Hamiltonian of the system then since they are they form an orthonormal and a complete set so therefore they can be used to write phi and phi can be written as a linear combination of them then what we can do is we can simply take the expectation value of the Hamiltonian and that would be psi m h psi n. So I hope this step is clear. If it isn't then you can basically um, get it from this step. So basically the uh, when you take the Hermitian adjoint of phi then what you are going to get is you will get a n star that would be the complex conjugate of a n and then the psi term would also be the adjoint so you will get this here so then you can just use this and this to get the uh, expectation value of h which is basically phi h phi so we will use that plug this into that and get this expectation value of h. Now we, what we are going to do is we are going to operate h on psi n and since h is the Hamiltonian operator it is basically going to give out the energy eigenvalues since psi n are its eigenwave functions therefore h is going to be equal to su summation over m and n a m star a n psi m psi n and since h operated on, upon psi n therefore we will have an e n term here because e n are the eigenvalues of h. Then basically um, I already told you guys that the wave functions are going to be orthonormal since they are the eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian therefore this term would be equal to 1 if m is equal to n and 0 if m is not equal to n. So that would basically bring me to the next step that would basically be um, give us h the expectation value of h equals summation over n and then a n star and a n because as you can see here um, we are going to make m equal to n in this whole term because that is only the um, because for m equal to n is the only case for which we are going to get a non-vanishing term on the RHS. So we will just make m equal to n all the way and then we will get en and then psi 
and psi n and that is also going to be one so it was pretty much redundant to write this so it is just going to be one and we will end up with a n square so basically the complex conjugate times the um, uh, the a n and its complex conjugate would basically give us the square of the modulus and then e n so this would give us the expectation value of h in terms of the e n now if you just go uh, expand it then what you'll get is you'll get a1 square e1 plus a2 square e2 plus a3 square e3 and so on then if you you know write e2 and e3 as basically some um, eddy uh, in terms of e1 plus some delta e2 term so as some uh, so you can write e2 as some correction to the e1 term then you can write e3 as some correction to the e2 term um, again to the e1 term as delta e3 so you can write all these eigenvalues in terms of e1 plus some term so if you just substitute all this in this equation then you will end up finally with h equals a1 square e1 plus a2 square e1 plus delta e2 plus a3 square in the parentheses we'll have a e1 plus delta e3 and so on so finally the expectation value of h can be written as e1 and by the way, E1 is the ground state energy because I'm taking N equals to 1 to represent the first um, state of the system. So that is basically the ground state energy in case you were wondering. So we will have E1 common and times A N square N. So why is that? Because you can see E1 times A1 square, E1 times A2 square plus E1 times A3 square and so on. So basically E1 would be taken out as common and then A n square would be summed over. And then plus we would have some terms like um, A n square times delta E n. So A n square delta E n. However, this time n will start from 2, as you can see. So, this would basically give me the expectation value of h. Now, as I have already mentioned that these eigenwave functions form a complete set, or you can say that these um, eigenwave functions are orthonormal. So, therefore, um, the summation of a n square that is needed would be e1 times 1 because um, summation of a n square should give us 1 because this is basically the probability of a n square basically represent the probability of finding the uh, system or the uh, probability of observing the nth eigenvalue of the system uh, of the Hamiltonian of the system so therefore the, the sum of all those probability probabilities should be 1 so therefore we would get summation of a n squared to be 1 so I have written 1 over here and plus we had those um, extra terms which are a n square times delta e n right so we have those extra terms too so now you can basically just say that the Hamiltonian, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian is basically EGS plus some extra terms. Now that would basically give us the inequality of the variation principle EG, I'm sorry, greater or equal to EGS, that is the ground state. So I've replaced E1 by EGS uh, to represent the ground system, so that's just uh, renaming of uh, the first state so that basically goes and proves the variational principle so to do this by yourself I would recommend that you can refer to 
DJ Griffiths introduction to quantum mechanics however he doesn't and basically um, performs this last three steps which are pretty much trivial I guess so that's why he just leaves them so we will now perform a quick overview of what we went through this chapter or topic so coming back to the starting so basically the variational principle states that the expectation value of the Hamiltonian with respect to some trial wave function phi always gives us an upper bound to the ground state energy of the system so the trial wave function phi can be written as a linear combination of the original eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian psi n and then we can use those to find the expectation value of h and we will plug all this into the expectation value of, uh, of the equation and make sure that your trial wave functions are normalized if they aren't normalized then you can normalize them by uh, dividing this whole equation by phi phi alright so make sure that the trial wave function are always normalized and then um, plugging all those things into the expectation value equation we uh, did a lot of operations and then we opened up uh, this part of the equation and we got a lot of terms and then we perform some trivial mathematics over here to finally get um, expectation of value of h equal to e1 times a n square summation of a n square plus some extra terms so basically the summation of a n square should be 1 that is what I told you the last step because the sum of the because a n square is basically the probability of observing the nth eigenvalue nth energy eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian so that the sum of all those probabilities should be 1 and then you just plug that back in and you get the inequality of the variational principle so that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it in case you liked it then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and have a great day